Okay, so the next item we're going to make is um, one of these rings. This one has been made from the Kit 12, the bow pendant and ring set. And it uses the longer piece of wire, which is the 144 millimeter 1.5 wire. This has also been made from the same wire, but this one I've stolen the earring posts from the looped uh, ring and earring kit, kit one. This one obviously has no um, earring post and the earring post I've actually used just here to um, locate the pearl and you thought they were fixed on but they're not um, so it depends whether you're going to make it with or without a pearl as to whether you need the earring posts if you've got any 0.8 wire you can also do it with 0.8 wire so before we do anything I'm going to anneal the piece of wire um, and actually before I do anything else I'm going to fill up the gas um, something I keep telling you to do and keep failing to do myself so I'm sorry about the sound effects. Hopefully this should have enough gas in it now. So I'm going to get on and anneal the piece of wire. And this is just to take the stresses and strains out of the material and make it easier to handle at, um, when we're bending it up. There is no way of speeding this up, so I'm sorry. It's a bit like you're watching paint dry while I do this. Um, you can actually watch the heat travelling along the metal I hope the camera's picking this up um, which gives you a fairly good idea as to where you heated and where you haven't um, and this is, as I say just to relieve the strains and stresses in the metal and to make it soft and malleable to work with which is what we're looking for at the next stage so having annealed that I'm then going to pop it into the pickle um, just for a couple of minutes to clean it up and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so having annealed the piece of wire, it's now much softer and much easier to straighten out um, a little bit. Um, so I'm going to mark, just for reference, approximately halfway along it. It's not crucial because you're almost certainly going to be chopping a little bit of the end off. But if we mark at seven centimetres, it gives you a good idea as to where the middle is. So I'm then going to take my round pliers and put them about level with the mark. And I'm going to pull the wire down either side. So it's more important to keep this so that the curve, it's important to keep this so that the curve is quite natural, hopefully. And then what we're going to do is try and line up the sides as best as possible and shape this in a little bit. So we're just going to pull this so that the wires this end start to pull together. Trying to keep this as level as possible. Of course, I've now put a kink in this, but... I'll try and level that back a bit. It's, the idea is not to grip too hard while you're doing this, because if you do, you're going to mark the wire. And ultimately what you're looking for is to get the wires sitting as near parallel as possible. OK, so I've got uh, the loop at the end and the wires as near parallel to each other as possible here. And what I have done, although you haven't seen this on camera, I did anneal it a couple of times whilst I was doing this um, just to keep it soft enough that actually it's easy to work with and get them lined up. So I'm going to flood down the gap between the two wires with Argentium flux and then I'm going to fuse the two wires so um, as you may have noticed I've turned my charcoal block over I haven't got a new one um, just in case you think I'm cheating so it's just a case of heating the wire up to the point that they will fuse and best to start at the point where you can see there's a really good touch and connection um, because they'll start to fuse easiest. 
So you're looking for the solder, and I'm just going to turn the block, close the blinds a little bit. This is the joy of working in the um, shed, not a studio. So um, we're looking for the metal to go shine, wet and then shiny, and we'll know that the fusing is taking place. So. We're just beginning to get up to temperature on this end now. I could have put more heat on here so that it doesn't all draw it out. And it's just happening now. So what we're looking to do is, is to pull the fuse up between the two wires. You see the surface of the metal is sort of looks a bit like it's sweating. what you want is a nice good fuse all the way along um, no gaps so I'm going to carry on doing this getting it up to temperature it would be so much easier if the sun wasn't shining through the window but um, now it's going again now this is just a case of have a little bit of patience and it will happen so what I've done here is I've just flipped it over because what I want to do is make sure that this is fused all the way along. So I've turned it over on the charcoal block just to make sure that that does happen. Because what you don't want is any gaps. Actually, one of the good things here that you'll notice, although it seems to be taking forever, is this, this is really because actually what I've now got is three millimetre wire. So it has fused as it's gone the way along. So unlike something that has solder between it, this is now something that is three millimetres wide. So it takes more heat to get up to temperature. And I just want to be sure that I have fused up this end. And looking at this, this is fused all the way along. So I'm going to let that cool down and just then once it has cooled down, I'm going to pop it in the pickle to get rid of all the um, uh, burnt on safety pickle. So um, I'll show you what to do once it's been pickled. So this is what it looks like once it's come out of the pickle. And all I'm going to do now before I start doing anything else is just to clean up um, with a round needle file the section down the middle just to make sure that I've got a nice clean firm joint. You can also, if you want, you can fuse further up, it's entirely up to you. Um, so I'm just going to clean that out a little bit more. And then you need to decide whether or not you want to keep a fully rounded, um, I've lost the other one, there it is, fully rounded uh, ring shank at the back or whether you want to flatten it out and whether you want to do a sort of any light hammering. Um, for this one, I'm actually just going to keep it straight. So um, on my trusted green scarring pad here, yeah, which I do use a lot just for taking off any remaining surface uh, material. So you can see now we've got um, mostly a nice tidy um, straight straight length but I am going to just tap it down a little bit just to straighten it out a little bit more um, 
before I start to put any shape into it. And what I'm also, because this one is going to be one that goes around and up through, and I know that the circumference of the ring that I want to make is around about 62, 63 millimetres. Um, but then you've got to allow for the little section that's coming up. So I'm just going to have a look and see what length this is coming up to. So this is still at 70, so I'm going to actually... Um, you can use a piercing saw, but if I use a piercing saw, this is going to be off camera. So I'm actually going to trim off just a little bit of the end here with my snips, like so, and then just file that flush, which I will have to do off camera in a minute because I need to do it on my um, bench peg. And that's really just to neaten the end off a little bit. Um, so because I know I want to put a pearl onto this one, I am going to take, and I'm actually going to take a piece of 0.8 wire, which I happen to have. Um, in fact, no, I'm not. I'm going to use the earring post. Um, this is where my postman, if he comes down the garden, is going to be absolutely certain that he knows I've gone mad because I'm sitting in the shed, seemingly talking to myself. So what I'm going to do is take the earring post and I'm going to fuse it onto the end of the strip that we've made if I can find the tweezers. So there we are. So I'm going to pop that on the end as near centrally as I can without sending it flying around the room. And you're going to say, well, this is a bit long. It is, but you're going to trim it off afterwards. So same thing as we've done previously. Just a little bit of flux on the end uh, and make sure it gets down onto the uh, earring post. Yeah. So, and we're just going to fuse this to the end. I always like to do as much as I can in the flat when I'm working because it's just easier to get at um, and it, it means it's simpler to deal with. So this should be getting up near temperature. This always feels like it's taking forever when I'm doing it on camera. It's very quick when you're not under any pressure, but um, under camera on the camera it always seems to take a long time not helped again by the, set, the sun coming out on the shed in the shed oh, it should just be starting to go now okay so i'm just going to let that cool down and then i'll show you what it looks like once it's cooled down the other thing you may find is the very end of the post might melt if you've been a bit overly aggressive with the heat, which I was. Um, don't worry about that because most of that is going to be trimmed off. So same thing again, what we'll do, there, that's what it looks like um, in position. So I'm going to pop that in the pickle and we'll come back to it when it's been pickled. So here we have it out of the pickle. Um, I could have left it in there a bit longer, but I haven't done just for the purposes of this, but it will come up nice and clean. So the next thing really is to shape the ring. And as with all things with Argentium, it's best to do it gently when you're applying pressure. This is relatively soft. Yes, it is. So I don't think I'm going to have to anneal it, but if you feel at this stage there's any tension in the metal, um, and that annealing would be a good idea, then um, feel free to do so and pickle it again. And what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to shape the end very gently on a mandrel, which I have actually unfortunately got off camera. But all it is is my uh, one of the one of the punches from my doming set um, that is in a vice. 
and then what I'm going to do having shaped the end I'm going to gently push and squeeze to shape the ring around my ring mandrel and just keep going and the reason I do the end first is because when you get to this stage if you don't do the round end to start with it becomes very difficult so I'm just going to pass that past the end so that I can knock it down and get a curve on it so at this stage this is what you're going to be looking at and the trick now and I do tend to do it with my fingers is to ease the section here underneath to the point that it's just coming between the center of the um bow bow that's not a bow is it it's a loop um so it's eased into the center and i'm then going to take this and this is a bit of a fiddler at this stage but bend it so that there is the location point for the pearl or you could just as easily be doing this with the bead so that's what we're doing at this stage just getting it to there so what you're aiming to do is to get it so that your post is um, coming up through the center of the ring and that the ring shape is as round as you'd like it to be um, I wanted this one for my little finger so that's fine um, I don't fuse this joint here um, it gives a little bit of play and it's quite nice um, snip it off as we've done with this one and fit your pearl or your bead it's just as nice actually with the bead on there or a semi-precious bead um, and the loop can be adjusted it depends whether you want a big wide loop I flattened this loop off with a hammer um, and filed it gently so I phased it into the round wire obviously what it then needs is polishing and finishing and there we have a really simple um, ring just using the straight wire and on this occasion the um, earring post